Now, you brought up uh, Kate Cowles and Deja, Senora, all those guys, uh, dual nationals. So let's go there first before sure. we get to the TNT game because the U.S. has already cap-tied five different players at this tournament. They've cap-tied Cowell. They've cap-tied Aiden Morris. They've cap-tied Brandon Vasquez. Uh, they've cap-tied Julian Gressel. Uh, last time I did this, I also forgot. Oh, Senora. Yep. Uh, the only one they can still cap-tie that they haven't yet is Gaga Slonina. Uh, on our pregame show last night, we ran a feature on Zendejas in which he discussed his decision to play for the U.S. over Mexico. Um, he pledged allegiance to the U.S. Uh, earlier this year, so he was already cap tied going into this tournament. But so that triggered this whole larger discussion on the pregame about dual nationals. And Landon Donovan had some very interesting comments. Let's take a listen to those right now. Hmm. I think this whole recruiting thing, um, it irks me. I'll be honest. I think we have it backwards. If you don't want to play for us with every fiber in your being, then don't play for us. Go somewhere else. Huh. You can tell when you listen to Alex. Obviously, he had a choice, but he was like, I know these guys. I've known them. He feels American. We've had people in the past, we all know them, who played for the U.S. a few times, maybe in a World Cup, and haven't stepped foot in America since and didn't really care. So if you don't want to be part of our country and wear that beautiful jersey, then don't wear it. I'm sick of this whole, like, we got to go recruit and get you. If you don't want to be here, don't be here. Sorry, I'm emotional. Mark. It's good. <laughs> We're emotional. all romantics around here. So, yeah, we, so we, we had this discussion last night. And look, a lot of times when you have a discussion on television, you, you don't have the desired and even at times the appropriate amount of time to really get into the nuance of this. And, you know, I really respect and appreciate what Landon has, has said. And in many ways over the years, I've said some of the same things. First off, I want to, I guess, blanket statement this. Nobody is saying that anybody is not American, right? I mean, you get a you get a passport, and ultimately you are eligible to play for the national team, and you are American. That's not what anybody is saying. We're talking about it in the context of playing for the national team. And I fully recognize that and respect that there is a mercenary element to dual nationals. Keep in mind, my father's Greek. Therefore, I could have played for Greece. I could have played for the, uh, the U.S. But the mercenary aspect comes in in most cases where the player will look at the situation and say, you know what, the, the chances of me playing for this country are slim and in many cases none as opposed to the chance for me playing in this country where not only can I play for this country, but I have the potential, potential to actually play in a World Cup. And if I didn't have this dual national distinction, sometimes tri-national distinction, there's not a chance in hell that I would ever come close to being on the stage. And I get that allure. I get that attraction. I get that value. But ultimately, you are going to walk on the field and represent a country. And in that moment, when you put on that jersey and you put your hand over your heart and you are singing that song, it has to mean something more. This is not a club situation. This is international soccer. If it doesn't mean more to you than the actual playing of the game and the score of the game, I do think that that is a problem. Does it, does it bother me that we are engaged in the uh, the recruitment and the wooing of dual nationals? No, in that sense, I, I guess I disagree with Landon. But the way that that process goes, I think, is important. And a real honesty with the player in that we're not promising you anything other than the opportunity to represent what I feel is the greatest country in the world. Does it mean that you are, that you're going to start, that you're going to play? No, but we have identified you as a potential player because of your dual national uh, status. And if you're out there choosing, this is why we think you should, uh, you should come. But if you don't feel something, David, if you don't feel something for the country that you are representing and going out there representing, it will manifest itself in your performance. I truly believe that. And to Landon's point, yes, there are absolutely in the past have been mercenaries. And while I think you can get away with it for a little bit, I do think, like I said, that it will manifest either on or off the field, and it will be detrimental. And so what, you know, what, what Landon was saying there, a lot of it, uh, a lot of it I, uh, I agree. But I also, 
have a respect and I can acknowledge, you know, the, the difficulties at times of the draw of this, you know, in this case, two countries, possibly three countries. It could be a mom and a dad. It could be, you know, a, a mom or a dad that, you know, you grew up very, very close to this country and culture and it's, and it's pulling you. You could look at it in a certain way as betraying a country or culture that you have been immersed in over the years. So I, you know, I, I can understand how difficult and at times maybe even painful it can be for uh for players but ultimately this is still about sports and this is still about uh, and this is still about a game but the, the final thing i'll say is i think we also have a responsibility in this recruitment process to not get to the point where we are almost weaponizing it and you know you talked about capping these players and tying them to the U.S., which we just did because this is an official competition. I would hate for it to get to a point where we are doing it simply so that player doesn't play for Mexico, in that we don't really have an intention of having them be a, a long-term part of the team. But we're going to do it now because the alternative is they go and they play for a rival or they go and they play for our competition. Now, that's a little cynical, but if that's where we get then I think that that uh, ultimately is a problem. You remember in the aftermath of the U.S. not qualifying for the World Cup when everyone was looking to have a go at the U.S. Soccer Federation? Yep. Remember how big a deal Jonathan Gonzalez uh, yep. choosing Mexico was? In fact, that, that was around the time we started doing this podcast. I remember some of our first episodes, that was a huge topic of conversation, and that guy has not been heard from again. It's, you know, it, and, and that's, in a sense, it's sad, but you better have your eyes open going into it when you pick. And I, I just hope, and I, and I think that whether it's Greg Berhalter in the past, Ernie Stewart, or whoever's in charge, now Matt Crocker, that you got to be really honest with, while you're selling yourself and you're selling your program, you also have to be really, really honest with these players because they only get one chance. And if they burn it on the U.S. and then they never hear from the U.S. again, that's not a good look for, uh, for the United States. But I also think if you're not involved in the recruitment of dual nationals, you're not, you're not doing your job. And, that, and finally, Mossy, there's also a segment out there. I've said this before. If the U.S. men's national team were to win a World Cup, nobody would give a crap about how it ultimately was done. Nobody would give a crap about how they played. And, I, and guess what? I don't. I don't think that many people would care ultimately what the makeup was of the team. There are some out there that just say it's just about winning. I, I, I get that, but I think it has to be more. It has to, it has to be about more than just winning. Again, this is a representation of your country, whether it's, you know, I, I, whether it's Panama or Canada or, St. Kitts and Nevis, it is a, represents, a representation of who you are. And therefore, I think it, it has added significance. And I don't think that that should just be cast away and, um, and lost all in an effort to simply win games. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops every week. Subscribe now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops twice a week right here on my very own YouTube page. The only way to stay up to date is to hit that subscribe button down below. Size the day and see you soon.